So I'm well aware winter hasn't started yet, but Christmas hat. I've organized this book list by mixing the adult and YA books together. And then last but not least, I put the children's books for last. And there's only two, so don't get too excited. There's not that many. It's just more for options. So the first books I'm going to mention are new releases, which is really exciting because we love a new book to read that no one else has read, right? At least I do. So the first book is Love Holly by Emily Stone. This story is about Holly who has a falling out with her family after a tragic accident. She ends up joining this holiday letter writing club where you send a letter to someone who's alone on the holidays and you receive a letter from someone who's also alone on the holidays, just kind of like a pen pal. And normally this is an anonymous process, but she ends up receiving a letter from someone named Emma who is grieving in a similar way that she is. And she decides to go try to meet her in person. Once she ends up meeting her and becoming friends with her, she tries to reunite her with her grandson, whose name is Jack. So she goes on the hunt for this guy. And of course, this guy happens to be the man that she saw at the gas station prior to this tragic accident that took place before the falling out with her family. I wasn't really sure how I felt about this book when I first started reading it. I, I thought it was going to be very cliche, but as the story continued on, it ended up being a really good read. And I loved the whole meaning and message behind it and the different points of views from similar situations, seeing You'll have to just read it. I don't want to ruin it, but it gives you a lot of perspective into certain situations when you are in someone else's shoes. And I, I really enjoyed this holiday romance. And so I wanted to put it first, firstly, because it was one of my favorites that I read and it's a new release. The next book that also came out in 2023 is called The Christmas Wager by Holly Cassidy. And this is very much a hallmark plot. You're gonna be able to figure out everything that's going on right from the beginning. You know exactly what's gonna happen, but you watch it anyways, because you just want those festive vibes. You want something that's gonna have a happy ending no matter what. And that's why we, we watch those types of movies and that's why we like them. In this book, we meet a LA real estate developer who is named Bella, who is sent to a different state to acquire this failing Christmas shop in order to gain this huge promotion. It seems like it's going good. She will stop at nothing to get this promotion. And they're about to sign all the documents until the grandson arrives. And he's like, no, that's not happening. You are lowballing us. You guys are such a huge business. You could afford to pay more. We're not selling for this cheap. But the owner of the shop kind of sees this unspoken connection between Bella and the grandson and decides to make this wager to determine the selling price of the store, depending on if she wins or loses these Christmas games that happen in the town. So the grandson who is named Jesse and Bella from LA end up going head to head in these Christmas games. And yeah, it's just super fun. It's very predictable, but you're gonna speed through it really quickly. It has all the vibes you want. It's very Christmassy. It's gonna get you in the holiday mood. The next book is Winter Street by Elin Hildebrand. And I, I can't decide if this is my favorite, but I feel like it is just because it's the most realistic depiction of holiday drama that just tends to happen. I don't know if it's just me, but I have experienced a lot of drama around the holidays. I feel like it never goes smoothly. If all of my family is together, there's something happening and this book reminds me of that. This story is just about a family getting together for Christmas time and all of the drama that takes place and just trying to make it happen and trying to have a nice time with family. It just never, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out and you get a love triangle in this, you get secrets, you get federal fraud. There's a lot of stuff that happens in this book and yeah, it really just shows a dysfunctional family on Christmas. <laughs> so it might not be the read for you depending on what type of book you're wanting to read, but it is a Christmas themed book and it's the first one of four in the series and I haven't read the other ones, but I do plan to because I really liked this one a lot. Before we move on to the rest of the books, I wanted to take a second to introduce today's sponsor of the video, which is Skillshare. 
So if you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is a community of creative and curious people that are really interested in exploring their interests further. Not only are you a part of a community of like-minded people, but you're also learning from inspiring, talented creators. Skillshare has a wide variety of classes covering many different topics. So whether you're looking to upgrade your film and video editing, your marketing, your productivity, your graphic design, illustration, there is a plethora of courses that you can choose from. Skillshare has a learn by doing approach to teaching where each member can actually create and share the project after they complete a class. I'm currently taking classes on, well, multiple things, but the one I've been working on recently is Procreate because outside of YouTube, I'm an artist and I have Procreate, but I've never actually learned the basics and already I have learned so much and now navigating procreate is a breeze as opposed to before i was just stressing on the smallest things because i just didn't know how to do it this is something that i created in one of my classes just learning how to use the different brushes and the simple things that you need to learn in order to actually use this successfully the reason i like skillshare is because i feel it allows me to reach achievable goals and it gives me structure in my day-to-day -day life that being said skillshare is doing something very special for all those creators out there so the first 500 people to click on my link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's continue on with the rest of the books. The next book is Once Upon a December by Amy Reichert. Once Upon a December was very reminiscent of the fantasy plot that you would see in the Santa Claus films and I really liked that because it's not often that you will read a book that's a bit more adult that has that magical fantasy aspect to it. This book is about Astra Noelle Snow who loves the holidays. I mean, her name says it all, right? But after a tough divorce, her annual trip to the Milwaukee market ends up taking on a whole new meaning because when she was married, it was a miserable experience and it was something she used to enjoy. And now that she's separated, she enjoys it again. And while she's there, she ends up meeting this really attractive guy named Jack and he makes Kringle. And the amount of times they said Kringle in this book, if you took an eggnog shot, you would be wasted by the end. Baby, don't do it, but it could be fun. And I don't even know what Kringle is. So if someone wants to fill me in on what Kringle is, it's a big part of this book. So she ends up meeting Jack and she likes him, but she soon discovers that after the Milwaukee market closes, none of her friends remember who he is. They have no idea what she's talking about. And soon she's introduced to this magical world and the relationship begins to blossom because she starts to realize she has been meeting him for years and years and years and not remembering it because of this magical world. And it's very romantic, it's very magical, but, but I will say this, the female friendships in this book are highly prioritized, which is such a rare thing to see, to prioritize your female friends over a guy that you're in love with. You don't really get that often, especially in books. In real life, you don't get that often. Normally it's the total opposite. So I really liked the fact that that was something you continuously saw throughout the narrative. The next book is So This Is Christmas by Jenny Holiday, and this came out in 2022. This book is about Matteo, who is a lifelong consultant of the Eldovian crown, and Kara, who is an American consultant, and they are brought together because they have to fix the king's finances. They end up clashing immediately. This is very much an enemies to lovers trope, which I love. As they work to restore Aldovia during Christmas time, Matteo begins to fall in love with Kara. His strong devotion that he has to his traditions, it just starts creating this barrier between them and they just don't know if they can get past it. It's very much a story about love that can either be accepted or sacrificed. For a crown. The next book is Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Ginny Bayliss. Why do I feel like everyone is named Ginny? <laughs> this book is about Nori and she goes to reunite with her friends in the English countryside for a wedding. And this particular group of friends is very, they're very snobby, they're very much entitled, and she's she's always kind of struggled with her working class roots and her private school background. While she's there, she ends up encountering old friends, old flings, and she also ends up 
falling for the head gardener who is totally, he does not like the group of people there at all. He just thinks they're pretentious and awful which they kind of are. And so she ends up spending more and more time with him and falling for him. And she ends up having to confront some tough decisions about love and life. The next book is A Cat Cafe Christmas by Cody Gary. And this book came out in 2022. And this book is about Kara, who is a veterinarian who also has a cat cafe where you can go in and have coffee and you can also adopt a cat in the process while you're there. You know, sort of that vibe. They have them here in LA. I need to go. I've always wanted to go. I need to go. But unfortunately, she ends up taking in too many cats and there's not enough customers to adopt these cats out. But then comes along Ben, who is this smart marketing guru, and he has a plan to save her cafe. But the way that they meet is very, uh, it's not the best meeting. So when he offers up this plan, she's like, no, but she realizes in the end, I actually do need to help my business. So I'm going to take you up on that. So although they have their differences, they do end up working together. They end up becoming friends because he ends up adopting a little kitten and learning how to take care of a cat. It's a very sweet story. And of course, while they are doing all that, they end up having this special connection that is undeniable and the rest is history. So it's the perfect story for finding love and saving furry friends. And I love a good cat book. <laughs> I love cats. The next book is The 12 Dates of Christmas. And this is by Ginny Bayless. And this came out in 2021. This is the perfect book if you're a fan of the Gilmore Girls, because the town she is in, this English village, just gives major Stars Hollow vibes along with the community of people. So if you're a fan of that show, then you know what you gotta do. This story is about Kate, who's 34 years old, and she's living in this small English town. And every December, she ends up doing 12 dates through this dating service where you're just kind of set up on these dates that are planned for you with random matches to hopefully find the perfect match. And she just kind of does it for fun. Like she doesn't think she's actually going to meet anyone. She just does it for fun. So as she's going on each date, it just gets worse and worse and the entire town is watching and they're keeping tabs on everything that's going on because it's such a tiny town. And as she's on these dates, she just doesn't want to be there. She realizes she's in love with someone who's been in her life a really long time, who happens to be a diner owner just alike in Stars Hollow. The next book is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox, and this came out in 2021. So this tells the story of two twins, one who is named Charlie, and she ends up losing her ability to taste and smell because of an accident, and the other sister, Cass, who recently had her own issues where she ended an engagement, and she's been trying to make it clear to her ex it's over. They decide to switch places. And while they switch places, they end up finding love interests in their new cities, which is a problem because it's not actually who they, they aren't actually who they say they are. And they aren't telling each other that they found love interests and they're saying that they're the other sister. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it kind of leads into chaos, but it's quite fun. I thought this book was very fast paced. It was a fun holiday read. I enjoyed it. The next book is Keep Me Warm at Christmas by Brenda Novak, and this came out in 2021. And I really liked this book. So this book follows Tia, who is this actress in LA, and she finally had her first breakthrough role in a movie. And right after she ends up getting in this almost fatal accident that puts this huge, scar on her face. She's been in hiding ever since from the paparazzi and she also do doesn't know if her acting career is over because of what's happened to her face. Because she's trying to hide from the limelight, she agrees to house it for her producer over the holidays. So that way, you know, no one sees her. And after she arrives, she realizes there's someone else living there and he, He's pretty spicy. His name is Seth and he's an artist and he has his own scars because he lost his wife and he's still healing from that. As they end up spending the holidays together, they end up opening up about their whole situation and everything that they're dealing with and struggling with and they end up finding comfort in each other and they end up finding healing. And I just thought it was such a sweet story. I enjoyed this book a lot. I thought it was so sweet. The next book is The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lisa, and this came out in 2021. So this book is about Jonathan and Gabby who are working in a struggling bookstore and they do not like each other. They cannot stand being around each other, but they have to work together. And when their jobs end up being put on the line, they decide whoever sells the most books in the month of December can keep the job. 
and the other person has to leave. But during the competition, things start to get a little complicated. They start to get a little touchy. He's being a little flirtatious and she's confused. She starts seeing a side of him that she didn't see before. And she's like, oh, I kind of, kind of like this guy. I don't want to like him, but I kind of do. <laughs> so this is really, uh, again, enemies to lovers trope, turning rivalry into romance. It does get pretty spicy towards the end though. Like very spicy. So be prepared for that. This is an adult book. The next book is The Christmas Table by Donna Van Leer. And this is very much a story about faith. It's about hope. And it's one of those Christmas stories that may not be for everyone. So in 1972, Joan's husband is building her this table for Thanksgiving. He wanted to build this table from scratch for Thanksgiving, but their lives are soon interrupted when Joan gets diagnosed with breast cancer. And in 2012, we see Lauren who discovers this table that has all of these recipe cards in it that are written from mother to daughter. And they're not just the recipe. It has like a note about the times that <laughs> these meals were served with family and why it was special and very heartwarming things. And so Lauren is determined to find the family of these cards and return it to them by Christmas time. So it's a heartwarming tale of holiday spirit, faith, love, and family. The next book is Christmas Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella, and this came out in 2019. So this book is about Becky who's just, she's enjoying life. She's getting ready for Christmas. She's online shopping. It goes into detail about shopping and trying to get the best deals on things, and it's hilarious because it's so accurate. But besides that, her parents end up uplifting their life, moving to Shoreditch, and they tell her, hey, look, you're, you're hosting Christmas now. And instantly she's stressing. She's like, oh my gosh, I have so much to figure out. And slowly but surely everything starts to unfold into chaos because you have her family that's giving her all these like super specific requests. And it's just funny. It's a really comical read. It's fast paced. I laughed at this book a lot and I couldn't recommend it more. The next book is One Day in December by Josie Silver and this came out in 2018. So this book is about Lori and she doesn't believe in love at first sight until she ends up locking eyes with a man on a bus and she never sees him again. So she ends up spending the next year trying to find this guy in her city. I feel this is a common occurrence that tends to happen at some point in someone's life where they lock eyes with someone and they feel this like connection and they don't talk to them and then they go their separate ways and they never know what happens. That's the story, except it plays out a little, a little further. So Lori ends up spending an entire year searching for him and never finds him until one day. She goes to her friend's Christmas party and her best friend introduces her to her boyfriend, who is the guy from the bus that she's been searching for. And the thing is, her best friend knows she's been searching for this guy, but she, she's not gonna tell him like, hey, this is the guy I've been looking for this whole time, you know? When that happens, that sort of situation happens, you're like, oh, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be because he found her and not me. This is a story of friendships, heartbreaks, and missed chances, and it unfolds over the course of 10 years. The next book is A Redbird Christmas by Fanny Flagg, and this came out in 2004. This story is about a man who is diagnosed with emphysema, and it's gotten to the point where they think it's his last Christmas and they tell him, look, you need to get out of Chicago. You need to go somewhere where it's hot because if you get sick at this point, you're not gonna make it. So he ends up going to a warm Southern Alabama town called Lost River. There he ends up encountering lots of charming characters like a boat riding postman, a group of ladies that are secretly doing deeds throughout the town. And there's also this little red bird that is consistently seen throughout the book that ends up playing a big part in this story. Now going back to Donna Van Leer, we are talking about the Christmas shoes and you probably know this book. So apparently this book is actually based on the song. So you might've heard this song before. I can't play the song, obviously. Just look it up, look up the Christmas shoes song. And if you know it, you know it, but this book is based off of that song. So if you know the song, you know exactly what's going to happen. You know what you're getting yourself into prior to reading it. And you know that you're going to cry. So this book is about Robert, who's a successful attorney. He's kind of lost touch with his family and he's in the process of losing his marriage. And then on the other hand, we have Nathan, who's this eight year old boy and his mom is battling cancer and it's just it's going to be her last christmas at this point these two end up crossing paths on christmas eve because robert 
is shopping for his family and Nathan is looking for the perfect shoes for his mom. And because of this encounter that ends up happening, because of these shoes, it ends up altering Robert's life forever. And there was one thing that was said at the end of this book that did not sit with me right. If you end up reading it and you find a section in it that just doesn't sit with you right, um, that's probably what I'm talking about. Maybe not everyone got that from it, but there was literally just one line that I felt didn't really make sense in talking about death. It's just not something you should say. Anyways, other than that, it's a good story. And the moral of the story is good. The next book is Christmas Bliss by Mary Kay Andrews, and this came out in 2013. Now there are other books to this series about the same characters, so this is just another one, but I just read this one as a standalone and it made perfect sense to me. I didn't need any of the other background information regarding the other books in order for this to make sense, so I think you could do this as a standalone. So this takes place in Savannah, Georgia, and it also takes place a little bit in New York, and it's about Wheezy, who's this antique dealer who is busy planning her upcoming wedding to this famous chef named Daniel. And during the same time, her best friend Bibi is pregnant and also refusing to marry her husband. And throughout this book, you're kind of experiencing everything that's going on with everyone. You're experiencing some drama between Wheezy and Daniel and some speculations that may lead to the downfall of their marriage, maybe. And you also get to experience a little bit of New York and you get to experience some interesting family dynamics leading up to the wedding. The next book is Dear Santa, and this book came out in 2018. And I, this book had such a great concept. I thought it was really well written. I thought it was very inspiring to do something similar that is done in this book. But the thing is, the timeline really got me. It felt very unrealistic. But other than that timeline thing, which I mean, it does play a big part, I'm gonna forget about that just to mention this book, just because I did think it was a good narrative and I, I would recommend it if you could just get around the fact that the plot is unreal, sorry, the timeline is unrealistic. This book is about Lindy who is going through this really hard breakup and she ends up going home for the holidays. And while she's home and she's talking with her mom, her mom's like, hey, I found your letters to Santa, it's so cute, you should read them. And after reading the letters she wrote when she was a kid, she realized everything that she asked for actually came true. So she decides, okay, well, if all that stuff came true, I'm going to write letters as an adult to try to manifest what I want right now. So she is wanting a new job opportunity. She's wanting to find a love interest. And I thought the idea of doing that was really cute, especially around Christmas time, because if you like manifesting, I like doing that personally, that's just me. But I felt like it was a really cute way to make it fit to the season by putting Dear Santa. You know, it's kind of like Dear Universe, except it's Dear Santa. I don't know, I thought it was so sweet. So of course, after she ends up writing this letter to Santa, magically everything she writes down starts coming into her life. The timeline, incredibly unrealistic. The things that happen, happen in such a short period. But besides that, I thought it was great because there's a lot of Christmassy things that take place. You're really going to be in the Christmas spirit when you read this. The next book is The Santa Suit by Mary Kay Andrews, and this came out in 2021. So Ivy, who's recently divorced, she ends up buying this farmhouse sight unseen and decides to go live in it and renovate it, just like that didn't see it just shows up and is like let's let's redo it which is learn from me it's the worst idea ever <laughs> and as she's cleaning up the house she ends up finding this vintage santa suit that has a note attached saying her one christmas wish is that her father will come home from the war and ivy's intrigued so she starts going into the town and trying to figure out who the santa suit belonged to and what happened to the family, pretty much. And so it ends up bringing her into the community. She ends up finding some romance. And overall, it's just a very heartfelt story. The next book is The Christmas Dress by Courtney Cole. And this came out in 2021. And I really liked this book. I feel like a lot of people have read this, but I had to put it on the list just on the off chance you haven't. But there's a reason this book is popular. This is a story about fashion designer Meg who puts her dreams on hold to go back to her hometown to manage her father's apartment building. She ends up befriending this woman named Ellie who decides to gift her this beautiful vintage gown under one condition 
that she must wear it to the building's holiday party. There's so much that goes into the story. I'm not saying it all. I don't want to give everything away, but there's a whole story behind this dress and what happened in this dress with the previous owner, which is why it's being passed on and it's so sweet. It's so sweet and it has a happy ending. It's sad at some points, but it still has that happy ending that, I mean, I think we all ultimately want. The next book is The Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan, and this came out in 2021. This book is about Carmen who ends up losing her job at a department store and she's forced to move in with her perfect sister. And because of this, her sister needs help in the bookstore and Carmen really dives into reviving this store for Christmas time and starts falling in love with being there. And as she's revamping this bookstore for Christmas time, she ends up encountering this famous author and there's a little bit of romance there. And this takes place in Edinburgh. I've never seen it around Christmas time, but I can imagine because this book was very good at giving descriptive, imaginative visuals to the scene. The next book is 10 Blind Dates by Emily Elston, and that came out in 2019. This is about a 17 year old girl who experiences a breakup right before Christmas. And when she goes to stay with her American Italian family, they decide to set her up on 10 blind dates. I, I did think at first reading this that the, the whole premise of setting up a 17 year old on 10 blind dates was a little odd for the age, but after reading it, it, it did end up being a holiday story that was appropriate. So if you're looking for something that's YA and not adult. The next book is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares. I loved this book. I thought it was perfect. The ambiance was amazing. It takes place in New York City. New York City is the perfect place to go for Christmas. It is so festive there. They really go all out with the decorations. So that setting alone, amazing. I thought the ending of this book though, not great. You know how some books have a great last line and you're like, wow, that didn't have this. Everything prior to that though was really good. It was really good. This story is about Lily who decides to leave a journal in a bookstore with essentially a bunch of dares. And these are dares to kind of get you out of your bubble and to do things you're afraid of and put yourself out there. And the person that ends up grabbing this book is Dash and Dash and Lily start communicating through the journal, leaving it at places throughout the city and end up developing this relationship through this journal. And they, they want to meet in person to see if this could really transpire into something on a physical level because they don't know. I would say this book was definitely more on the realistic side in terms of if this happened and you met up, would you be disappointed? Would you be happy right off the bat? And I, I liked that it wasn't just this perfect situation that happened right away and it was a little convoluted like life. The next book is The Christmas Spirit by Debbie Maycomber. And this book came out in 1995 and Debbie has a lot a lot of books. So if you like this one and you want something similar that's just going to give you those happy vibes, you're, you're not going to be disappointed. So this book is narrated by a grandmother who is sharing a story with her grandkids. It's about Peter and Hank who are best friends, but they live, I mean, entirely different lives. Peter is a pastor who's getting ready for church service and Hank is a bartender. And when Peter suggests that Hank's job is way easier, they decide to switch places and it ends up being a lot more chaotic than they thought. The pastor is having a very hard time at the bar. A woman walks in who kind of saves him from a very bad situation and he starts falling for her and she happens to work at a strip club. You really see some relationships blossom that are, it's a very unique one. It's not something you've ever seen before. The next book, which is a series of books, and it's Harry Potter. This is the perfect series to pick up around this time of year or any time of the year. You're going to find a little bit of Christmas in every book, so you might as well just read the whole series, right? No, but there are very standout chapters in specific books of the series that really scream Christmas. And that is the first book when he has his first Christmas at Hogwarts with you know, his newfound family, which is so beautiful. Also chapters 11 in The Prisoner of Azkaban and chapter 23 in The Order of the Phoenix. The next book is Mr. Dickens and His Carol. This is by Samantha Silva, and this came out in 2017. So this is a fictional story about how Charles Dickens ended up creating A Christmas Carol. This book is about Dickens who is struggling with writer's block and 
He's also having marriage issues, you know, it's this whole thing. So he ends up going to London to seek inspiration and based upon the experiences that he has there, it ends up bleeding in to the story that he ends up creating. To me, it felt a little slow paced, especially because lots of the Christmas books I am recommending are very fast paced. This is one of the slower ones for me, but a lot of people do like it. So you might be that person that absolutely loves it. And speaking of Charles Dickens, of course, I have to recommend A Christmas Carol. This is a classic. And this came out in 1843. We're now moving into classics. This is the tale of Ebenezer Scrooge, who encounters three ghostly spirits who end up taking him through three different time periods to make him no longer hate Christmas. So after he goes through all these different time periods, he ends up coming back a changed man. I love this book because I grew up watching this play every Christmas. It was just something we did. And now I really want to go see it now. Yeah, it's a really good story. The next book I wanted to mention was Little Women, and this was published in 1868. So Little Women is the story about the four March sisters and how they navigate life and love, family, and how they grow up in the Civil War era. This story begins with the March sisters enduring their first Christmas without their father and ends a year later when their father returns on Christmas Day. So that's kind of how it ties in to the Christmas theme. And the last two books on this list are children's books. So the first one is Letters from Father Christmas by J.R. Tolkien. This is such a special read. If you're looking for those nostalgic vibes, this is it because these are handwritten letters from him to his kids over the span of 20 years. This story has all of the handwritten letters. It has all of the illustrations. And as time goes on, it turns into something more than what it started as. It turns into this entire story with all these fantasy characters. I got letters from Santa from my parents and I really miss the times when I believed in that magic, that sort of magic. And I, I'm always searching for that to this day as an adult because I wanna be the person that can believe in things. And this book really does that. It just brings me back to those times. And the last book to conclude this video it's the Polar Express by Chris Van Alsberg, and this was published in 1985. It is a short but sweet story, and I wish to this day they would make a much longer version because I would totally read it. This story is about a boy who wakes up in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve to a train outside of his window, and he ends up boarding the train, which takes him to the North Pole to Santa and it's about his adventure there. It's a little bit about his adventure there. It's really not too much. The moral of the story is mostly the ending and it's so sad. The premise of it is so sad, but it's a very good, it's a very good book and it's just a reminder. Don't lose that sense of hope and magic when you are an adult. So that is it for all of my recommendations. I hope you found something new to check out this season. And if you would like to recommend some other books for me to read in the future, because I am done for all my winter reads because I've been doing it since months ago. If you have anything that you absolutely love that I have not mentioned on this list, I would love to know what it is so I can add it to my, you know, TBR for the future. I would love that. Well, that is it. I hope this kicks off a wonderful start to your festive season and I'll see you guys in the next one.